Hi everyone, this is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming, and today I'm stoked to bring you the review for The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Though we aren't in October yet, the months of horror games are upon us, and now it's time to see if The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is The Boogans, an easily forgettable tale of evil with a name that'll be forgotten in mere moments, despite it sounding like some kind of childhood illness as everyone wonders what the fuck they just played, or will it be The Thing, a tale of grotesque and unforgettable horror, the likes of which haunts the minds of children and adults alike and made grown men fear giving someone CPR. Let's check it out and see just how spooky a little story about a secluded woods can be. I mean, it doesn't sound that scary. Graphics are up first. By the gods, this looks amazing. I mean, this looks amazing. If Skyrim looked like this, it'd be called The Vanishing of Adults 18 through 34 because no one would ever leave the fucking house again. I mean, damn. Though you do get some stutter in loading areas and at times of sustained quick movement, all in all, it ran better than I expected, especially as good as it looks, and every inch of the world is interesting in a very ungame-like way. You see, the tech behind this involves gathering a shit ton of pictures of really mundane shit and then putting them into the game engine, which sounds boring and probably was. But arguing with the result would be idiotic. If there was no stuttering, this would probably be perfect and get my awards for graphics of 2014. Actually, no, this probably will still get it since no other game just looks this goddamn good. Sound music and voice. This sounds perfect. Seriously, this raises the level and atmosphere of the game to a level that it wouldn't reach if they hadn't taken care here. From the ambient whistle of wind, to the creak of wood, to the drip of water and labyrinth-like tunnels, even the flapping of bird wings, the sounds are doled out in a steady stream that has you jerking your view this way and that in some truly tense moments. All of it very well done. Music. It's not Marty O'Donnell, and it's not Jeremy Soule, but it is actually damn close. It's not only fits with the game, but adds a good deal of tension to the set pieces as well, as an overall arc of descending into the unknown as you continue. The game has some mild moments where the music doesn't hit just right, but it's mostly ambient and it does it perfect. It's not there to remind you it's there, it's there to remind you of the atmosphere of the game. Fits, excellent. Voice. This was a bit hit and miss. Overall, it's good and there isn't a ton. The main character intones in a way that makes me feel that he isn't just a guy who saw some shit, but is a guy who saw some shit and then was lobotomized and then carterized his adrenal gland just in case. Because damn, some shit happens that if it was me, you would actually hear the sound of my soiled underwear in my voice, which I don't know what that sounds like, but you would. Everyone else is fairly okay, but nothing really special. They show up and deliver lines, and they do so with emotion, but there are no standouts. This could have all been fixed by just having the main character be voiced by Sam Neill. Hell, all the characters could have just been Sam Neill showing up and phoning it in, even the kid's voice. Next is gameplay, the most important part. This is a detective game that's both out to show you just how amazing it can look, but to also tell a fairly cohesive tale, even if it's delivered in a couple unique placement puzzles and sometimes a bit out of sequence. As you move forward through the world and begin to uncover what happened to Ethan Carter, you inspect the world around you, unlocking visions of past events, and that's when it dawns on you, everyone here was batshit insane. It's probably like what that kid felt in Phantom Menace when George Lucas said that Padme was gonna come on to him at the age of like fucking seven. The game weaves through the wilderness, caves, buildings, and gray graveyards and each location is almost overbearing in its detail. Luckily, finding out where you need to go or what you need to do is usually a somewhat trivial issue and the real meat is held within the story and discovering the chronological events of the strange ass shit that has occurred in the game. Think the TV show Unforgettable and that one movie where the kid talks to dead people wrapped up into one pretty much scary game and you'll have it and sprinkle on a bit of The Shining and a hefty bit of H.P. Lovecraft when you're done. See, that's the thing. A game like this is going to have to pay homage to many horror movies, books, and probably true tales, and has to do something different. The gameplay here is just different enough, the story just interesting enough, and the world downright haunting enough that it keeps you glued to your seat. So what does The Vanishing of Ethan Carter do right? Graphics are simply stunning. I mean, holy shit, for the most part, this is real stunning. The music fits the game almost perfectly with a few quibbles here and there. The story is actually fairly concise and tight, if it does require a bit of guesswork at times on the puzzles due to them purposely leaving out data to make it a little bit difficult. So what does The Vanishing of Ethan Carter get wrong? The puzzle types are restricted to just a few types, which can remove a bit of the mystery, as it's usually not something that's surprising you that you come up on new, but sort of something that surprises you about the location and what happened there, but with the same puzzle type to figure it out. 
As you know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or lock it in the closet with that thing we found on the side of the road rating scale. This is a must buy, a game that delivers in all areas and for the price that is perfectly in murderous tone with what you get. A game that actually had me yell, oh Jesus shit taters, more than one time, but masterfully keeps you unaware of the next scary moment by having a really good deal of suspenseful gameplay and investigation and exploration in between. Well, that's it. Review is over. If you liked the video, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. And always remember that the order of events in a murder usually involve the murder after you pick up the murder weapon. Peace out.